G'day and welcome back to Motoring Box. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how you can cheaply and easily clean up the engine bay of your car. Let's go. So this is the engine bay of my 2004 BA Falcon Mark II XR6 Turbo, which I picked up a couple of weeks ago. And overall, it's pretty neat. There's no obvious oil leaks or anything like that that I can see, but it's just really in need of a general tidy up. Now, I don't enter my car into show and shine events or concourse or anything like that. So if you're after a guide to get your car up to concourse condition, cleanliness wise anyway, this is not going to be the video for you. This video is more of a quick how-to guide on how to get the engine bay of your daily driven car to be in tip top condition. It's not going to win any show and shine awards, but it is going to hopefully look a lot better than it does right now. And for very little financial outlay and minimal effort. So let's run through what you're gonna need. Now, if you know me, I like to keep things pretty simple, so you're not gonna need very many things. The first thing is a can of degreaser spray. This stuff is actually really cheap, just a couple of dollars from your automotive parts store. The next thing is a can of Armoral tire foam. Now this might sound a little bit strange, but the word on the grapevine is that this stuff is awesome for cleaning engines, so I can't wait to see how it performs. The next thing you're gonna need is a brush of some kind. This is just a regular wheel cleaner style brush. It really will help agitate the tire foam, I believe. So make sure you grab yourself one of those. And it is going to be a messy job, so make sure you've got some gloves. Now on this particular engine, which is an Australian designed Barra Turbo, there is a lot of intake ducting, which snakes its way across the top of the engine. So what I'm actually going to do is disassemble some of that. So in order to help facilitate that, you're going to need a socket set, couple of screwdrivers, things like that. So let's get straight into it. So before we start spraying cleaning products or water around the engine bay, it's always an excellent idea to disconnect the battery. In my case, the negative terminal also has some built up corrosion, which can begin to impede the flow of electricity. So it's always an excellent idea to clean this off if you see this on your battery terminals. Another reason to disconnect the battery is it's common for the battery tray underneath to get extremely dirty. And if you don't clean it out regularly, corrosion can also start to set in underneath. When you're removing a car battery, you should always start with the negative terminal first. And do as I say and not as I do. If your car has a rubber cap over the positive battery terminal, do leave it in place because it's a great way to prevent your spanner from shorting the terminals on the battery and potentially causing an explosion. Finally, we can remove the battery hold down before lifting the battery and the battery surround out of the engine bay of the car. As I mentioned in the video introduction, I'm actually going to be removing all of the intake ducting, piping and airbox from the engine bay of the car. This is so I can clean all of these pieces individually and also get access to the areas of the engine which are otherwise covered by all of this arrangement. This is actually fairly simple to remove. You just need to loosen off all of the hose clamps, remove the piping and also the crossover piece which sits on top of the engine. We also need to reach down the side here and loosen the hose clamps which attach to the front of the turbocharger. Once you've done that, the whole pipe should lift out in one piece. Once you've removed the three nuts, the whole piece just lifts off in one go and it also takes the blow-off valve and piping with it. The rubber joiner on the throttle body also needs a good clean, so I'm going to remove this one as well. With the airbox and the intake piping out of the way, we've got really good access to start cleaning up the engine. Before I start spraying the tire foam or water around the engine bay, I'm going to be very careful and seal off any access to the engine internals and I'm simply using some plastic sandwich bags and some zip ties to seal them off. I'm also doing the same thing to the turbocharger inlet and also the pipe which runs down to the intercooler. The next step is to get your can of degreaser and spray it onto any areas of oil which are sitting on top of your engine. My wife always says I have a terrible aim and it looks like I've just proved her point. But once you've got it aimed properly, spray it onto all of the patches and then wipe off the oil with an old rag. Once your engine has been roughly degreased, you can break out your can of tire foam. You can literally spray this product anywhere in your engine bay. So on the block itself, the intake ducting, but also the painted areas, including the battery tray and also where the airbox used to sit. Give the can a really good shake and start spraying it onto the engine. 
The general idea here is that we're going to give every single surface and part of the engine a good covering of the tyre foam because it really seems to help loosen up any oil, grit, dirt and the like and it'll make it really easy to either wipe it off with a cloth. I can also tell you that it's safe to spray it on your belts and it didn't cause any slip when I started the engine later on. Once you're happy, let it sit for about a good 5 or 10 minutes and then come back and see how it looks. So it's already looking fantastic in my opinion, but the next step really depends on how you want to do things. I'm planning to use a hose and water to spray out the majority of the engine bay, but I am going to be careful of a few key areas. The first area is the top of the rocker cover here, and I will also be careful with the hose to make sure I don't spray it too much around the turbo. I am going to cover the alternator as well, so be careful of that. Other areas that you need to be careful of are obviously around the throttle body, the ECU which is under this plastic cover over on the passenger side of the car. To wipe down the top of the engine, I'm simply using an old microfiber cloth. And it's looking fantastic. The little trace amounts of oil and grease which were still on the top of the engine are wiping off really easily. And it's also given the plastics a nice shine. So I'm now going to grab the hose and start spraying down the rest of the engine. If you've got access to an air compressor, I have heard that you can actually use that to spray off the rest of the tyre foam. You can also do the same with a couple of old cloths and wipe down all of the surfaces yourself. With the engine bay drying, I'm going to clean up all of the individual intake parts which I removed earlier on in the video, starting with the air box itself. So what I'm going to do is spray the entire bottom half with the tyre foam and then hose it out with water to see if I can dislodge a lot of the grit which is currently sitting in between all of the plastic fins. And I'm going to move on to the upper half of the air box while I let the tyre foam work its magic on the lower half. Same as before, simply apply an even coating of the foam over all of the plastics and also in between all of the fins on the rubber intake ducting. We can also apply the foam to the intake crossover piece which sits on top of the engine, but I am going to try avoid getting any into the inside of this piece even though it shouldn't really be a problem and it should dry fairly quickly anyway. And we'll also apply some foam to the intake piping as well. Once you've let it sit for 5 or 10 minutes, grab your hose or a cloth and then start removing the foam from the items. I decided to use the hose again here, but I reckon with hindsight, wiping these pieces down with a cloth is probably a better option. With all of the intake pieces clean, we can now turn our attention back to the engine bay, which is dried off and looking absolutely fantastic. And it's at this point that you can grab your tyre foam and go over any of the engine bay items which need additional cleaning. In my case, the fuse box here still looks pretty dirty, so I'm going to spray some tyre foam onto it and then wipe all of the surfaces down with an old cloth. The area around the brake booster was also looking pretty ordinary, so I'm going to go over these areas in exactly the same way. Because I really love how the top of the Barra engine looks, I'm going to give it another going over to get it as clean as possible. The red is really starting to pop compared to how it looked before, and the black top cover also looks really nice. Seeing as I'm not going to be spraying any more water around the engine bay, I'm going to remove the plastic covers which I put over the throttle body, turbo and the intake piping as well. And also remove the sheet of plastic which I put over the alternator. And it's at this point that you can take one final look around the engine bay and make sure you haven't missed any areas which are highly visible. And then once you're happy, you can start reassembling any items which you removed off the engine. And I'm going to start with the intake crossover piece which sits on top of the engine. Make sure you bolt everything down properly and once it's in place you can even give it one last shot of the tyre foam and then wipe it down. From there we can start reassembling the intake ducting. Starting with the cold side of the ducting which runs from the crossover piece to the turbo inlet. Make sure that the rubber joiners and also the hose clamps are in really good condition because we don't want to create any leaks in the engine intake. A leak on the cold side could cause the engine to run a little bit rougher, but on the hot side piping it would create a boost leak, which is definitely not what we want. And the next thing to go in is the airbox itself, bolting down the lower half before reinstalling the filter and then clipping on the top cover. With the airbox in place, we can then reinstall the intake piping which runs to the crossover and also the intake snorkel which attaches with two screws. And again, if any of these items look like they need an additional clean, 
get your tire foam and give them a final going over. With the engine bay assembled, we can now turn our attention to the battery. In my case, the negative terminal does have a lot of corrosion. And seeing as I have the tire foam can still in my hand, it seems like it could probably do a pretty good job here. So I decided to spray the entire top of the battery with the foam and then give it a wipe down. When it comes to car batteries, you probably don't want to be spraying them with jets of water because you might inadvertently create a short circuit between both of the top terminals. I don't believe this tire foam contains any water, so it definitely seems to be safe to spray across the top of the battery. Once you're happy with how the battery is looking, we can then turn our attention back to the battery area in the engine bay. In my case, I wanted to give the negative terminal a bit of a clean to remove any residual corrosion. Again, I'm going to use tire foam, but you can also use sandpaper to sand the terminal surfaces, degreaser or any other products you might have on hand. And then before the battery is put back in place, make sure the battery tray is as clean as possible. We can then refit the battery box and then lower the battery back into place. With the battery in place, we can reinstall the hold down. Because the thing to remember here is you don't need to tighten this to the ability of your strength. Instead, simply begin to tighten it and once you start to meet resistance, just give it a few more turns. And to confirm that you've tightened down the battery enough, give it a bit of a wiggle to make sure it doesn't move at all. When you're reinstalling the leads, you want to start with the positive one first, making sure that the connector is pushed down as far as it can over the battery post, and then tightening it up to make sure it fits snugly. And you can then do the same with the negative battery terminal, being especially careful not to short this one out onto the positive post of the battery. And with the battery installed, this brings us to the end of the job. So take a step back and have a look at what you've been able to achieve. And there we have it. I think you can agree that even though this Armor All tire foam has obviously been designed for tires, it has done an absolutely amazing job of cleaning up this engine bay. The product must have some properties in there which helps to remove grease and oil and things like that because really after you spray it onto these surfaces and let it sit for five or 10 minutes, it really makes it extremely easy to wipe off any oil or other bits of dirt or things that are on the engine. Now sure, I'm not going to win any show and shines or anything, but that's not the point. You know, I drive this car every day and within a couple of weeks or a couple of months, it'll probably need to be cleaned again. So I'm really happy with the end result. I'll be able to work on this engine now and not get my hands super greasy or oily. And this product really is a bargain. It costs less than $10 and I've still got a little bit left in the can. So I might even try it on tires because apparently it's good for that too. So what do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really happy with it, but if you've got any tips on how this could be done better, do let me know because I love to learn as well. And now that the engine is dry, I guess the last thing to do is to make sure that it starts. See you next time. Whoa, let's hold up a second. Now, I decided to revisit this engine bay one week later to take a look and see how this product has held up over time because I know inevitably there's going to be people in the comments section saying that Armour or Tire Foam is a shit product to be using to clean an engine. After all, it probably contains silicon. It's going to make these surfaces a lot more sticky and attract more dust. But as you can see from how the engine is still looking, this is simply not the case. I think a lot of people are going wrong here because they're probably thinking that the tire foam is a lot like a regular tire shine, when it is in fact, in my experience, completely different. Something like an SCA tire shine like this one leaves the surface of your tires and plastics really quite oily and definitely that would attract a lot of dust. But I've found that the tire foam leaves the surfaces almost completely dry and with a fairly matte finish. So if you take a look at the plastics on top of the engine here, they are all still looking really good. 
The dust buildup isn't any higher than what I would have expected after a week's worth of driving. So again, I'm really happy with the end result and I can definitely recommend the Armoral tyre foam if you want to clean your engine. And that really is the end this time, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or you found it to be slightly educational, please do consider subscribing to Motoring Box and check out some of the other videos I've got on the channel. See you next time.